Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Jin Yang, a pro product manager from Huawei. I'm taking charge of the high end mobile computing platform planning and the AI ecosystem building. Today, my topic is enabling AI for everyone. I will focus on the high AI foundation platform. During my presentation, first, I will introduce the current mobile AI chain and the challenge. And second, I will introduce Huawei's solution, high AI mobile computing platform. And then, I will uh, give some examples to show the values that high AI brings to developers. In the last, I will introduce the technology that we used. OK, let's begin. Everyone know the breakthrough in computing performance and uh, algorithm innovation and uh, explosive growth of big data drive this wave of AI development. Not only AI is booming in auto driving and the smart city, but also AI is going to bring a huge innovation to the smartphones. And we are fundamentally changed to the smartphone to the next iteration, the intelligent phones. As on the computing performance is becoming more powerful, 80% of smartphones will have on-device AI capabilities by 2022. You will find more and more applications are used deep learning and uh, machine learning technology like Facebook, Snapchat, TikTok. But however, the mobile phone is a type of general product form in which the applications are un uh, complex and uh, the scenes of AI user case are uncertain. That's a challenge. Another challenge for mobile AI, you know, the AI algorithm is changed very fast and continuously, and ever increase in the new neural network operators. And for different applications, scenarios, for each developers use a diverse training framework. Uh, they have the uh, uh, TensorFlow, Cafe, Torch, PyTorch. So you'd, you'd, you'd better to uh, think about the safeguarding of development cost, migration cost, and uh, benefit sharing and uh, proper IPs for the developers. So if you want to uh, design and develop an uh, AI open platform for, for the users, uh, you uh, should face this challenge. So Huawei provides a total solution, high AI mobile computing platform. High AI provides three levels, cloud, device, de device and cheap open AI platform to bring extra ordinary experience to users and developers. It's Especially for the cheap level high AI foundation. Uh, in September last year, Huawei launched its Q970 uh, mobile chipset, the industry's first, uh, uh, first to integrate the dedicated neural network processing named NPU. This breaks through the AI computing performance bottleneck on the mobile phone. So, High AI Foundation provides an AI computing library and its APIs dedicated for the neural network model and the neural network operators accelerating on, on the NGO. This is the High AI Foundation architecture. To the up layer is the High AI engine to provide some popular AI function APIs like uh, speech recognition, computer vision, and uh, lecture language processing APIs for some uh, app developers who don't have their own AI algorithm. Uh, in the coming uh, next topic, my colleague will give you the de detailed introduction for the high AI engine. Uh, on the high AI foundation, we have three engines, uh, online inference engine, on device training engine, and the offline inference engine. We will provide a group of accelerating AI APIs. 
to uh, make the to accelerate the neural network operators and the neural network neural network models accelerating uh, on the heterogeneous computing system, and we also provide a, uh, the model compilation, model loading, running, unloading API. Uh, these are the model level APIs to make the developers quickly convert and deploy their AI models on high AI platform. And uh, we will gradually provide uh, open the NN and the BLAST a APIs to meet the to meet the relaxable requirement for the algorithm innovation because uh, for some uh, high level developers they would like to try some new neural network uh, models and uh, new neural network structures they uh, even use the customized neural network layers so we uh, uh, we will provide the customized layer uh, APIs to meet such require uh, such flexible requirement to provide a programmable platform to developers, and uh, 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 our platform uh, supports enough mainstream neural network operators, uh, including uh, convolution, deconvolution, full connection. The number of operators uh, is up to 90 in current version, and uh, the number of operators we will, we will support uh, ever increasing to, to meet the demand of the chain that the AI algorithm change very fast and continuously. And we, will, uh, we provide a very popular existing Android Studio's ID, uh, plugins and IDEs and abundance of documentation and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, reference sourcing code and enough technical support engineers to greatly reduce the migration and deploy cost and time. As I mentioned before, there is a big trend of moving cloud AI to the on-device AI. High AI Foundation can enable on device AI and bring the great values to the developers. First is the real time. Users pursue, uh, pursue the real time response, mainly AI use case that enhance an experience that cannot afford latency. Second is privacy. Today, a lot of machine learning service have to send your data off to the cloud for the actual analysis. If, if the AI calculation can be done locally, that means the user can get service offline, and uh, it, will, the, it will be the less risk to users of data getting linked and uh, or hacked. The third is uh, cost. If, if you don't need to send your data, send the user data to the server, uh, that means uh, it will save the traffic data. Save the traffic data for the developers. If the AI calculation can be done uh, locally, it will save pay for servers. So next, I will uh, give some examples to show the values high AI uh, bring to the applications. First is Prisma. Uh, Maybe uh, most of people here load Prisma and play it. Uh, Prisma is uh, transforming your photos and uh, videos into works of art using the style of famous artists. Pr uh, Prisma actually uses uh, deep learning to implement it. And uh, most of people have the same experience that you need to send your photo to the server for, for the transforming. It will take dozens of seconds. It's a long, very slow. That's a bad user experience. Uh, with high AI enabled, let's have the look the radio. The image transforming speed uh, three times faster than the iPhone X cloud version.
see, that's the real time that high I bring to the to Prisma. Actually, the the target can be less than one second. Another story is TikTok. TikTok is a short video application. is very popular recently in China, and uh, uh, most of uh, young children, uh, young guys like it very much. Everyone can share the 15 second videos to publicly, and everyone can comment it. In this case, the dynamic background uh, replacement function of TikTok can ex execute it uh, on high eye platform, and by high eye enabled TikTok, the segmentation algorithm can gain the, the high precision and uh, performance. Let's uh, look the left video. Without high eye, TikTok run the wrong Samsung S9. Please uh, watch uh, carefully the, the edge of the, the finger and the hand and the leg. Please watch the, you will find the precession of segmentation is not good. Okay, with high eye, let's uh, have a look at the right video. You will find the Precession of segmentation is coming on better. Okay, uh, let's uh, look at it at the same time again. They have a big difference of the precession of segmentation. Besides that, high I can enable many kinds of applications, like this table list, the applications related to the short video, live streaming, social platforms, and photography. This kind of uh, applications gradually uh, start to use the computer vision algorithm, uh, like the gesture, feature, posture, recognition, and uh, image recognition photo classification, how I can make them running smoothly and efficiently on, on the mobile phone. And uh, for the shopping scenarios, uh, like Taobao, Alibaba, uh, Amazon, the people's uh, search and buy goods uh, from, uh, from the image recognition by through the photo and the videos in uh, proceed locally in combination of cloud. For the AR, AR also is becoming more and more popular in recent, uh, recent two years. AR call and AR kit only can recognize the, the, the plane and the vertical face. In order to, in order to, in order to achieve more realistic and cool effect, the better environment understanding is required, so how I can make it possible. Besides that, uh, the computing vision scenarios, how I also can enable, uh, can benefit the natural language processing scenarios, uh, such as translation application, input method application. We have successfully cooperated with the Microsoft Translator to make the translation offline and get the real-time response, and we uh, can make the input method applications get the uh, more ac accurate words prediction. So, how I bring the such great values to many kinds of applications and, and the scenarios? So, what kinds of technology that I used? Uh, next, uh, I will going to introduce the technology. You know, the computation, the computing of neural networks uh, differs from the scalar computing and uh, logic control general purpose computing on the traditional CPU. It also differs from the 
uh, vector computing, uh, rendering and imaging processing on the GPU. The computing of neural network re reference the, uh, the special operator computing, including the convolution, deconvolution, full connection. Most of case, it's reference to the tensor computing. So high AI foundation integrates the uh, dedicated neural network processing unit, NPU, and, uh, and uh, support a dedicated uh, of AI instructions for neural network model operations that allow more efficient parallel execution of more neural network operators within minimal clock circles. The high AI can compile a variety of neural network operations into a dedicated AI instruction sequences with data and weight rearrangement for, for optimize the performance. And the instruction and the data are combined together, together to generate the offline execution model. Furthermore, during the compilation, the cross layer can be fused uh, together to greatly reduce the bandwidth of the DDR and thus improve the performance. Hi, I support the sparse model acceleration. The NPO can skip the multiple N operation by coefficient of zero, which can greatly improve the computing efficiency and reduce the bandwidth while maintaining computing precession. The high M computing platform supports low bit quotization, effectively reducing the computing bandwidth and the storage consumption and improving the energy efficiency. So next, uh, I will uh, introduce the high AI execution flow and showing the finger uh, by using conversion tool, a trained neural network model is converted into an offline model that can be efficiently executed on the high AI platform and output as the binary file. The main purpose of compiling the standard neural network model into an offline model is to optimize the network configuration. After compilation, an optimized offline target fare is generated, which is uh, serialized and uh, stored on the disk. As a result, when the inference is performed, the optimized uh, target fare is used. It's very fast and efficient, efficient during the processing. During the offline model computing, the offline model is loaded from the fare and the data entered by users is copied to the NPU's memory for computing. Your data only needs to be imported from the DDR to the NPU's memory once for each inference. To address the challenge from the mobile AI, application scenes are uncertain and uh, continuously innovated neural networks and operators. High AI platform use the strategy of rapid version iteration. We, uh, we provide the two version annually. Uh, High AI V100 is released uh, last October, and the high AI V150 is released uh, in this April. Compared to two versions, the, the new high AI V150 supports more framework APIs, we end uh, support more uh, Android and, and, and TensorFlow Lite, and uh, we support uh, uh, operators, uh, the numbers up to 90, and uh, uh, we, we will support uh, operators uh, up to uh, 150, 156 in the coming uh, new version in September. And uh, uh, we provide the more easy to use tools uh, 
graphic IDE and Android Studios plugins and uh, log out analysis tools, and more FAQ and uh, developer and uh, new sample code and documents and technical support uh, engineers to greatly reduce the deploy and uh, migration cost and uh, time for developers. So to summarize, I recommend the offline mode inference compiler doesn't take up time of runtime, more efficient and runtime, and uh, much from support, high AI support cafe and TensorFlow, TensorFlow Lite. We also support cafe 2 and Onyx in September, the new version. As, um, right now, we support 19 operators, rapid iteration for more, and support all platform after Q970 uh, mobile chipset with fast device growth and high platform usage. Not only app, not, uh, not only uh, applications that hi AI can enable to develop, also it can enable to extend more edge intelligence terminals, such as robot, so service robots, smart home, smart city, and automotive. In this April, Huawei launched the HiK970, which is a popular development board for edge AI development. HiK970 is the third generation of HiK series in Linaro's 96 board. It is a leading AI-enabled development board with powerful computing performance and a richer hardware interface. High K970 supports a, a more popular AI stack with, with support high AI frameworks and Android NN, OpenCL, OpenGL, and uh, we support uh, Linux and Android OS. And uh, supporting both CPU and GPU AI calculation and uh, NPU based neural network computing hardware acceleration which can greatly help on device AI development. This is a high K970 detail specs. So if you want to more information and want to buy the high K970, you can visit our uh, website and, uh, uh, and buy uh, through our sellers, uh, High Hope. Uh, that's all. Thank you for attention. <laughs> Any questions? Okay. Yes. So uh, you, you spoke about uh, an offline model. Um, can this offline model be improved? So you, you said that um, the model can be taken offline to your device. Yes. Can this mo model learn some more in the offline mode? Uh, yeah, actually uh, we uh, just uh, I mentioned in this slide. It's under in the developing. We uh, also provide the online training engines, but uh, in current version, we don't support that. In our uh, next version, we support the on the world training. Yeah. But it's, uh, uh, the training uh, only uh, works on the GPU. OK. Uh, hello. Uh I have a little question. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> oh, here, here, here. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I have a question about on device competition, about running offline models on devices. Uh, do you have any information, maybe any statistics about measurement of performance for common uh, machine learning architecture? I mean, for example, maybe we try to run YOLA, the second version on usual uh, mobile phone and with the uh, neural processing unit uh, of your of Huawei, which was, was made by Huawei. It's interesting for me how uh, efficient 
performance of a common architecture on your devices? Uh, actually, it's, it's a good question. I will ask my, my senior engineer. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Sean. I'm a principal product manager uh, for our tools and uh, and also IDE team. So I actually have some data here, but it's for tomorrow though, so I can review a little bit for you uh, to run a ResNet 50 on our device, um, the P20 here, Pro, which by the way has three cameras. Looks great, I can show you some pictures tomorrow. Uh, ResNet 50, you can infer about 2,005 pictures per second. Yeah, so just a little bit more. On iPhone X, you can do 889. So about more than double than what iPhone X can do. So, but uh, I'll speak more about it tomorrow. So in case you guys want to come tomorrow afternoon, the same time here. A little bit commercial here. Okay. Uh, Samuels, there's still time for other questions. Maybe. I see somebody with a... Yeah, we switch to engines, engine part. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. So, uh, sorry, guys, guys, there's still a question. Can you answer it maybe? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, you said there were 90 plus operators supported. Um, is there a list in your documentation where you can see which operations are supported? Yeah. One more. Talk some, okay. And another question. Do, do you also support uh, tools where you can like, um, make performance measurements, um, for example, CPU versus GPU versus NPU, to get specific insights of, uh, on optimizing also the architecture for, um, for the hardware? Do you um, also have tools to, to measure on the specific uh, parts of the chips, chipset? Well, mine works. You can have mine. Yeah, just to repeat my answer, the performance tools will come later this year. Not at the moment, but we're not planning to release such a performance tool to sort of simultaneously tell you, okay, if you, you, you would use this network or any sort of neural network, how what's the performance on CPU versus GPU versus MPU on our device. That's not in the plan, but that being said, you can do that yourself, I guess. It just need, you, you just need to, I guess, run the same thing on, on, on an Android that has GPU and on an Android that just uses yeah, CPU it, versus our MPU. Yeah, I get, I, my, my question goes into the direction of uh, for example, optimizing that uh, the NPU is used um, as much as possible. So, for example, I don't know, if I would train a network, I would have NVIDIA tools to see how much the GPU is utilized. So, on inference, you would also want to, uh, I guess, have most inference run on NPU and then compare that with uh, the GPU utilization and have as, as little load as possible on the CPU. So, just like I was wondering if, if there is access to see how, like which parts of the model perform how well on the different things. But I guess, uh, I, I guess you, you, you already answered that pretty much, okay. Yeah, but, but I mean, to answer the first part of the question, the entire model is running on MPU. We don't offload it to CPU to do the, you know, do the non-tensor calculation. Okay. As far as I remember, that's how yeah. it is. Maybe we can move that to offline later on. Yeah, okay, thanks. sure. So then I think we can pass to the second part of the workshop, right? And the, pre the speaker right now is gonna be Vincent. Yeah, I hope I pronounced it correctly. But yeah, let's make also a big applause for him and uh, have a nice second part. Hello. Uh, okay, good afternoon everyone. Uh, I'm very glad to have this opportunity standing here and sharing some of our work. I'm Vincent. I'm an Android developer and also am um, now learn and uh, a little bit familiar with machine learning and deep learning. So before I introduce the, this part, 
uh, please allow me to ask your questions. Uh, how many of you guys are familiar with Android development? How many of you guys? OK. OK, almost, almost. Uh, how many of you guys are familiar with the machine learning or deep learning? OK, just uh, a little, just a little. OK, thank you, thank you. So uh, Huawei ha is a, you know, it currently plays a very important role in the field of Android mobile phone. So we, uh, our device is based on Android. It's totally based on Android. And especially recent years, we have lots of intelligence phones. So, so what is the intelligence phones? We, we have lots of in artificial intelligence features on the phone. And it's really improve user experience, this intelligence phone. And as the Dr. Li Feifei said, so the democratizing AI is inevitable. So we are also willing to share our technologies to uh, help ease the development burden of optimizing large artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, data set and models for mobile apps. This is for mobile apps. OK, so what are we going to talk about today? This is my topic, uh, high engine open platform. So I don't have to. OK, as the keynotes and the previous speaker said, we already know that the solution of high AI includes a high AI service, high AI engine, and high AI foundation. So we already know foundation is about how to accelerate your models, make your models run really fast. Uh, here I want to focus about the engine layer. The engine layer is for Android developers, but not familiar with, not much familiar with, familiar with AI uh, technologies like machine learning, deep learning, or something. Uh, it makes you, but you want to build an application with AI elements. So Engine is helping you with, in this case. It provides minimalist API to let you integrate multiple AI capabilities into your apps to make extraordinary experience to users. This is what we want, and this is what we provide. OK, so. OK, just take me as an example. I'm an Android developer first. So I will share you the stories about when I first I was new to uh, machine learning and how I learned to machine learning, how I create my first AI models, AI elements applications. So actually, there are some prerequisites and requirements. We need to learn. We need to. We need to learn at what so many machine learning and deep learning algorithms are, and why they work, and so how they work, and why they perform well or not. This is our purpose to learn. So we need to get that, and we can get a more powerful AI application. So uh, it's maybe uh, in the course, in the course, network course, uh, maybe Coursera, the Utah City, like something like that. I just learned from that, or MIT, so lectures, something like that. It, it takes me about across approximately six months to finish all the lessons. And then, but the, this is also depends on some mathematics, because you need to know uh, statistics, in, which includes the concept of like, mean variance. You, are, you also need to know this is the hardest, I think, for me, it's the hardest one. This is the linear algebra. You need to know the, oh, <laughs> you, you, get, you get it. Linear algebra includes the concept of vector matrix. This is, that's a little complicated. And of course, you need to know calculus. You need to know the uh, differentiation, integration, and the partial derivative. So if you know partial derivative, you can know the, why the cost of function, the loss of function works well. So uh, for me, it takes approximately, what, this? Uh, 15 months, maybe, to finish this course. And after this, I'm ready to start go to do some AI real world work. So then I just start to go. I, but unfortunately, what is boring me very much is doing AI models, creating AI models is really boring and tired. Because the 90% of my work is collecting data or data cleaning. This is really terrible. But anyway, I, I still uh, do augmentations for, for the data and do some just the training, some uh, turning, changing some learning rate or something. 
I fine tuned the model, I create my first AI model. So, hooray. <laughs> it's the AI model. And, but then I made another scenarios. Unfortunately, the models I previously trained is, does not work. So you, you know that the, just, the front, just now, the AI models is not work for all the scenarios. It's just one, one scenario is so good. So the, the workload of creating another model is double. And as do more and more scenarios, the workload is multiplied by n. This is a disaster. So, anyway, at the last even the development phase is completed. How to upgrade, how to upgrade models, push our models to users? Because we, uh, the purpose of us is to setting or something to, to share our application. But the model is in application, you know, right? But it's, it's difficult because some people don't upgrade your applications. It's difficult to, to do that part. So all of this is terrible. Let's just uh, turn to the next page. OK. Uh, I think, I'm, unfortunately, I learned uh, uh, machine learning is too earlier because at that time, we, we don't have the high engine. Uh, as we just calculate, I, for, for myself, I just took about uh, 18 months to 24 months to, to create a real models. But from the, uh, with the help of higher engine, we can just do like this. With less hour, uh, less two hours, you can, you can create an application with uh, AI elements. So this is cool. And maybe uh, they, if we have time, the, the last part uh, of my presentation, I'll uh, just code in here and let you show how to uh, integrate this something API, OK? The last part. <coughs> and here is what I want to talk about, this is why we can achieve the goal. So as you know, uh, our higher engine is an engine-based service. As you, guys, as you guys are all familiar with engines, we provided some AR SDK for developers. So uh, this AR is very lightweight. Uh, is resp responsible for bounding service into the engine layer. So you can not worry about the algorithms itself, but only focus on what you want to do, like just the uh, facial detection, the image classification, something like that. And you may pay attention on this, the model managers here. Model managers here, why we, uh, why we provide this part? Because it's hard to upgrade and maintain your models. Here, we, the models we have provided is, also, is, is uh, either a system presets or uh, download on demand. So it's not in your app. Uh, this is what we do. And of course, the, uh, the previous one is the, the frame, the structure of the, uh, there's a brief note that shows the, everything you need to know. So for application developer who wants to do something AI-related work, uh, the only things you need to integrate is one AR. It's called, oh, I don't, I don't show this. It's called Huawei High Vision. So one package for all. You can use this one SDK, and you can get all the things you want. So it offers meaningful list API. Uh, this is the reason why we are pretty sure you can integrate the AI elements uh, ability with, with the last time. And it's better you know that the whole, the entire processing is on device, so you don't need network. Uh, that means it's safe, can protect your privacy, you know, your photos don't uh, upload in the service. Who, kn who knows they use our photos to do something? Yes, this is so, so we are safe, and you can use it anytime, anywhere. And we also now do that the models as some presets or downloaded on demand, we already mentioned it. And previous speakers said they we have a high AI function. So the function is about to how to accelerate your models. If you use the API, the engine layer provided, we also you also share both the function acceleration, acceleration, and you can use the minimalist API. So you you all get them. And <coughs> Okay, here comes the 
engine version 1.0. So uh, the orange uh, color is we already published the API. You can use it right now. Uh, later, I will uh, show you some developer websites. You can just run your code, code here. And you can see we, we provided barcode, QR code detector, image, category label, scene detection, document detection, correction. We also provided this cool ability. OK, this is called a static score, which can rate your photos. Uh, can judge the beauty of your photos. I think it's amazing. And we also, <laughs> we also <laughs> provided a rich facial detection API. And for image enhancement, we give the image super resolution, which really uh, improve the quali quality of your photo. And for segment uh, segmentation, we both provided the portrait and the uh, image semantic. And the uh, the third line, the bottom line, this API uh, is not opened out China yet, so I think they will meet you soon, okay? And you may be wondering, there are so many APIs, and what can we do use so many APIs? Do you have these questions? The same question, okay, okay. Uh, please look at the photos I took. The photos I took in Beijing, China, is any one of you has ever been to China? OK, there was one. OK, OK. This picture is took in China, Beijing. And the weather that, the weather that day was awesome, so I took it. But you guys see the photos. It's not cool enough. Can't reflect my mood. So luckily, my, my Huawei phone can make the photos like this. I think it's a more movie style, and it's cool enough. But it's not secret. We just do some image enhancement for on the blue sky. Yes, but we need to know first is about the blue sky. This is, this is what we do. You may not forget we, the APIs we provided include the scene detection API. So with the help of scene detection API, not only the blue sky, you can always get uh, classified images into multiple categories, OK? So it can cruise uh, something. And if you input images below, the, 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 the bottom image, you will get the scene of fireworks. So this is what I do. <coughs> Let's see another. Uh, is anyone can recognize the UI is from WhatsApp? Anyone? No? OK. I just saw this is an app. This is called Prisma. It can transfer you photos and videos into work of art using the style of famous artist. And in China, lots of people like doing, using this kind of applications who can add filters and make your photos different styles. Actually, in China, it's popular. In Europe, you guys don't use this kind of apps? No? <laughs> oh my god. OK. So <laughs> the, the problem of that kind of application is that they, they, so they provided uh, more and more filters to make different styles. So the more filters means stronger function or uh, selection phobia. This is what we want, I, I want to discuss about. Because you hear this UI. In Android phone, uh, they only recommended three, at most four, in one screen. So if they provide thousands of options, maybe I want to give a task to you. So choose the best one you like from the thousands of options. So maybe see you two days later. This, this is a disaster. So uh, I'm, I'm glad to say the, this app already use our API of scene detection. So they recommended users top two, top two of the, uh, the, the choice from thousands of options. <coughs> OK, let's see how to use the scene detection API. As we are an Android-based service, so we provided a method in it to let you bind to the service the uh, to the engine service. 
This is for so binding service, you already know it. And this is the first step. You can't use the other API, any other API, unless you successfully do it. And then we need to prepare our input. As we, are, as we do computer vision, so our input is almost the, the bitmap. And you can set your bitmap into the, the class frame. And later we will provide another class video, so it will maintain your video input. And then we do the AI logic. You know it's a scene detector. We just knew a create a scene detector and then detect, that's all. So this is why we are really simple. And then you get the result, that's all. And here is another situation we common, we, we often use, we usually match these situations. Uh, Please pay attention to the left one. It shows the children, they all make up, dancing on the stage. And in this picture, they all look the same, at least in these photos. And the face size is really small, so maybe even the, the parents of the, of the one girl cannot, at a glance, figure out which one is my daughter, I think. So let's see how, the, how our ability can deal with these situations. And the left one is that you may pay attention to the behind the, the boy with blue t-shirt whose face is half obscure. You know this? Let's see how we can do it, okay? I'm glad to say we already have the, some work about that. It's the face detection. So face detection can recognize something uh, if you're is a side face or uh, this one, this boy, the face is blurred and side face something, we can all recognize this. And for the previous situations, I want to show you the, this is the UI of Huawei Gallery. And I want to pay attention to the thumbnails of the yellow frame that shows the makeup girls dance on the stage. And this thumbnails is about the, the, blue, the boy with blue t-shirt. And we also, okay, we also saw the yellow, uh, the orange frame. So th this is the girl, this is the girl we got and this is the boy. So you can find Huawei Gallery already collected the uh, 482 photos of the girl and already uh, 179 photos of the boy. So with the help of API face detection, this is our engine's ability, and Huawei Gallery find our children. <coughs> so let's see uh, the sample code of face detection. You may notice that this is a really similar one. It's really similar, this is what I do. This is what I designed, so they're similar. So once you get one of the API, you can feel free to use any other. And okay, there's, there's, uh, this is the cool ability I said. This is uh, uh, a static score engine. They can uh, rate a photo. I will not explain too much things about this because uh, later I will do a real coding here, so just uh, about this. <clears throat> okay, the, the similar code, and as the design of the APIs is really simple, here I want to show you some detail about the design of the API. Uh, you can pay attention that the, the detect return, uh, we, we offer the uh, JSON object, and we also offer the convert result method to, to get a Java class. So this is exactly what we do. For web developers, we, you, you may feel comfortable when you see the JSON object, and for developers, na native Android developers, you may prefer the, the Java class. This is what we design. And okay, here comes my favorite part. Uh, take off your photos, you see your albums, maybe you can see, if you do not have a, Huawei devices, maybe you can see this kind of mess up 
photos this. We can't find uh, last summer our kids' Disneyland trips photos, and we also can't find uh, last year my birthday photos, so it's really hard to find our photos. And luckily, we already provided... Uh, okay. Oh, we already provided an API about classy, uh, now is what, labor, classified labor, image category labor, yes, yes. And let's see, this is a lot of photos and we search and I input the, input what, I think, input October 26th birthday. This is our October 26th birthday, sorry, it's Chinese. But then you get all the result of that birthday. This is what we do, you can quickly search your photos because we, we provided the API that can label you out of your photos. And you may notice that it's all on device, so you don't care about the privacy problems. <coughs> and here comes the, another sample code. So as this is really simple, and I want to tell you another detail about the API. You may pay attention about the second parameters of the detect method. I just input non here, and you can, cho you can choose to put a subclass of the vision callback. It can make this, this lens to asynchronize the mode. And of course, as the detect, detect method may cost the time, even they are really fast, but you know, uh, AI logic really costs time. It's cost time. So we prefer that you do the detect methods in a work thread. So if you do not have any special requirements, the, the synchronized mode is also enough. <coughs> and here we, also, we all know the, these situations. Just here some people take the photos of maybe you are now right in the middle, like something that you can get this kind of similar photos. Uh, actually, I should tell this about things uh, at the first, so they can make you uh, don't get uh, this, kind of, this kind of photos. We have the solution. <coughs> so the solution is about uh, several APIs together can deal with this problem. And the first one is document detection and correction. Okay, so you see the photos here, this is like this. And we can use document detection, detect where is the document, and we can correct the angle of the documents like this. And another API to solve the, this situation is, oh sorry, uh, this is the, the document sample. So you may ask, this is all similar, why I insist uh, showing the similar ones again and again. Does anyone have an idea why I do this? Anyone? Yes, I just think you don't know. <laughs> the reason why I do this is I want you to feel tired when you see the similar ones. Because from, the, from, from what, what, when I speak and to this, you only see five times of the code, of the sample code, and now maybe you're tired. It improves what? It, it improves the API I designed. It's really simple. You already, you already master it. You, you don't want to see it again. This is what I do. <coughs> okay, the other, uh, another uh, ability to solve the, the mass of reports is that the image super resolution. Uh, we provide enhanced image clarity and we support 1x, 3x, the mode. 3x is both for hat and white, so it's nine times magnification. And let's see, okay, let's see the, the result. The one click generation of PPT. So it's also the UI of Huawei Gallery and we do it together with the app WPS. Let's see. First, we selected mass report, and then we, cr oh, and then we was This is really quick. You, you, already, got the, you already got the reports. Uh, let's, let's just do it again. I didn't follow the speed. 
So select and share and create pre presentation and just uh, you get the result. Okay, this is what we do. And this amazing, this amazing uh, function is done by the app WPS using our uh, those uh, documentation uh, correction API and the super resolution API. And I'm glad to say developers from WPS also came here today and willing to share the, uh, the development stories and experience to us. And after uh, her sharing, I will do the coding things. So time for w WPS. Let's welcome, OK? Uh, I'm Lina from Kingsoft office in Beijing. It's a great pleasure to meet you here. First of all, please allow me to introduce our company and our product. Kingsoft was founded in 1988 and listed in Hong Kong in 2007. It has four subsidiary companies, Kingsoft Office, Cheetah Mobile, Kingsoft Cloud, and Season Games. Our offices are located in China and the United States. Our product, WPS Office, is one of the most popular all-in-one office suite. With WPS Office, you can read, create, edit all kinds of files, include Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and PDF. You can share and access them anywhere at any time. And you can use WPS Office free on all your devices your Android phone, your iPhone, your tablet, and your computer. All your documents could be saved and synchronized across all your devices with our cloud service. There are over 1.25 billion installs and more than 215 million monthly active users. WPS dominates China market and we are expanding our global footprint and increasing international global awareness. As what we are talking about here today is that how AI is used in WPS Office and how AI is redefining mobile applications. Just like today, you come here to join the workshop and you want to share the presentation with your team, what we'll do. Now, you can finish it easily with the help of High AI and WPS Office. High AI and WPS Office can help you take notes, such as meeting minutes and lecture notes without handwriting and keyboarding. What you need to do is to take out your mobile, take photos, select photos which you want to add in your presentation. High AI and WPS Office will recognize the main content on each of your photos and capture clean the images and transform them into a presentation document. Then you can send it to anyone you want. Yes, AI makes it easy. As Vincent mentioned before, we used three high AI APIs to create this feature, document detection, document correction, and image super resolution. You couldn't imagine that how fast the integration progress is. It took us only half a day to deal with the high AI APIs to make the main procedure work. We spent several days and took a lot of photos to test and optimize the working flow to improve the user experience. After we created this feature, users open more files and spend more time in WPS. We think that AI and machine learning will explore and unlock many interesting areas. We must keep learning and get ready for the upcoming challenges. That is why we cooperate with high AI. During our 
cooperation, high AI help us a lot with its professional AI skills. It builds a favorable ecological environment for developers and provides all-round technical support. High AI will bring the power of AI and machine learning into your application. Now, we keep working on creating more intelligent features with high AI. We hope that you could join us. Let us work together to get AI to help everyone. Here is my mail. For any cooperation, please feel free to contact me. Thanks for your time. OK, thanks for sharing. And I'm pretty sure uh, Huawei and WPS will together do something uh, more fantastic features to improve user experience. And this is the, this is the spot info of the higher engine. So you can, the, uh, this is the website like, what looks like, and this is the website. So you can, uh, you, you can use uh, the API I mentioned earlier, it's right now from this API. And okay, after this, have I finished? <laughs> Okay, and you also can scan this, uh, this QR code or, or uh, email us for support. And I here sincerely want the Android developers, uh, you all join us, use the, uh, use the API, and we both, we together create some fantastic application. This is way what I want to do. Uh, sincerely join us. Okay. Uh, now let's do some coding. Uh, I'll launch my Android Studio. Just a little second. Can't see this. Andrew P. So duplicate. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Here I take a, an example of as you all are Andrew application developer and some of you familiar with machine learning. So I just uh, took the demo from TensorFlow Lite and I'll show you how you can uh, integrate the API I mentioned to the TensorFlow Lite demo. Okay, so here is the As you see here is the, the, de the, the code, the demo code from TensorFlow Lite who has the ability of uh, quickly classify images. So, so it's to image classification. Let's see here. Uh, he has a camera to, what was this? Uh, okay, camera to basic fragment. And the main logic of this demo is classify image. So this is what, what he do. And I'll tell you how to use the aesthetic scroll here to how to use this. And we have the IDE and we have a plugin and to the IDE. So the, tomorrow and at the same time, our college will uh, introduce how to install and how uh, the function of the IDE. So I, I just, I have already installed it. It's a plugin of Android Studio, and this is here. I just launched it. So here uh, is out of our API. You can see the aesthetic score at the top. And what, we, what I do is here. So you can see the code here, uh, TensorFlow classify frames, and I, would, I don't want to classify frame, frame. I just want to no. 
I just want to give my photos, uh, to, to judge my photos. So let's comment it and and L here, I will click and drag the aesthetic score here. So you'll see uh, uh, all the code here. This is the, the tire sample code you have already seen many times. And we can see this. The, the first one is the, the, the code about initial part. And because here is the uh, classified frame. We don't want to init the, every time when I met a new frame. So I just cut it here. So I just cut it and I'll say, so where should I, <laughs> where should I place it, you guess? It's, I, I want, okay. Maybe uh, activity created. At the first time activity created, I just uh, paste it here. And okay, this is this is wrong. So it okay. So in it, the first parameter is context. So let's see, get context here, and let's see the. Let's see the classify frame. So this, here we get the asset score detector and we imp prepare our input to the frame. And as TensorFlow Lite's demo already have a bitmap. So here we don't need to prepare ourselves. We just uh, set a bitmap into our frame. And then we want to get the score. This is JSON object, this is a static score a Java class, and we get the score. And we see that the, the last part of it is destroy. As we, I will uh, have a, this demo is a real time demo, I will do the frame again and again, so there's no need to dest destroy the code. Okay, so let's also cut it off. And let's figure it out where I can put the destroy master. I think it's uh okay, here is on destroy. So let's paste it here. And let's back to the code here. Okay. Okay, we here we got the score and we need to the text to show a pendant, the score of your photo is a pend score. Okay, here's now the, the score. I just need to the this. Okay. Where is my phone? Okay. Let's see what it will happen. Oh, you guys can't see the you, you guys can't see the phone. So I, I just uh, install it and then I'll show you how it's. Okay, we connected our phone and we just uh, build the application and see what happened. Okay, there's an error. So where is it? It's, it also needs a context. So we can hear context here. 
And we, I'll try again. <clears throat> so let's see what happened. Is there still has an error? I'm a little bit nervous now. <laughs> Okay, I think I'm installing the applications. And here it comes. I will show you some about. So now it's no need to see this screen. I want you to see the, see what's going on the application. Do we have how to access this? Oh, chico, 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 chico. Take it. Put it, put it, put it, put it. Or any of you want to uh, come here and try? Because uh, this can, okay, welcome, welcome. Because you can uh, use this to, to score the things at a good time. And I want to thank you very much. And if you can uh, tell, tell others also what, you, uh, what you like. So this is a score, and you can, you can pass it to the you can see it. Okay, bye. Here, 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 come on, okay, okay. Come here, we can, oh, I got some uh, chocolate and candy. So, okay, so let's, uh, maybe you light, can, you, you can get this, start, can, can, uh, can, light can you start. light? Cake. Oh, switched on. Okay, let's, okay, let's go. Oh, that is fantastic. Is it higher? Yeah, 75. 75, so we can use, maybe you can use that other. 78. No, it can't get much better. Maybe you can use this that Everyone ah. say that. And when so says that? See. Uh, anyone see that? Oh. But no, that goes down. Because we the we the, two close to the, the, the structure is, is not we, we have the shadows here. Yes. So the, the this ability is to judge how your photos are taken. The better photos are taken, you the higher score will be. So it's it's difficult to uh, to hear stand here. If anyone maybe we can oh. uh, close. Still the shade probably here. Oh no, this is really bad photos. We only get less than thirty marks. <laughs> but actually, I get uh, how many? <laughs> how much score I get? You got a million, I think. <laughs> I got a million. Thank you. <laughs> how much score I get? No. Sixty-nine. Sixty-nine. Oh, it's the highest score. I said. <laughs> Thank okay. you. And tomorrow, tomorrow, the same time, 2, 2 p.m., uh, our college will uh, tell you the more detailed things about how to use uh, the ID and name is called Huawei Dev Pico. So you can, you can come here. This is really, really, really well done. Okay. That's a cool name. Uh, oh, okay. Yes. Do you have, have any questions? Okay, please. What is the score? What is the Ascentation score. What does it mean? Score mean. Is that score mean? Oh, okay. Mean. Uh, this no, is you're right uh, the points <laughs> the photos you've taken. Uh, now I have this to say, uh, if your photo has other features, such as be focused, slow light, or blur, or skewer, or... Oh, 
okay, okay. Thanks. That's clear. Can you tell us, please, what is the idea plugin? Uh, what do you used? Uh, idea plugin. Oh, okay. I'll. Uh, can I need? We we have the uh, developer website. You may think it's similar as the developer Google. Here is the developer always, and you can get uh, all, all the APIs, uh, the information about, and also the ID is included in the SDK. And you can download it. It's about the final code, the developer tools, the study, and also uh, some others. Study is in the same way. It's a tag. It's a tag. And Okay, so the, uh, you can use the bug in the store and you just yeah. choose that name. And you can write what's the name? What's the name? The B E V C R E C L. Then you call. And this is just a band. You can download the SK uh, as a website. Oh, sorry. I think. Okay, okay, here. This is the QR code, and this, the bottom is the website. Okay, is any questions? Any other questions? We still have a little bit of time. Well, hello, thank you for your presentation. Oh. Um, I just browsed the, the website that you showed us here, and okay. I can see that here are only um, samples of uh, um, computer vision. Do you have any samples of speech recognition or something like that? Speech, because you mean the, the uh, speech uh, recognition, something like that? Yes. Uh, we actually, we have this ability, but it's not open outside China yet. Okay. Uh, sorry, but uh, they will come soon. Okay, so my question is, uh, do you have any models for uh, sound processing? Any, mo any models? models? Because for, for uh, I can see that here are a lot of um, models for um, visual processing, yeah? Yes, for for, for um, detecting some scenes or something like that. Do you have any models or samples how to create that models uh, for speech uh, or generally for sound processing? Oh, uh, you mean the, the, the lecture? How to, 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 it's a course to, how to learn the... No, because you have prepared some samples. How to uh, do face detection, for example. How yeah? to do face detection. Uh, face detection. There are some samples, yeah? Do you have any samples for uh, processing uh, the sound? Or, or no? Oh, you, you actually uh, will want to uh, focus on the, the sound, the voice. Yes, you, yes. Okay, it's, uh, now, it's now we just uh, published the, the computer vision part. Okay. The, the, this sound we, we call the ASR, you, mean, you know that? The mm -hmm. ASR part we, 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 we can't already publish uh, in Europe here. Because uh, the language is different. Because okay. We, I'm from the uh, misery is China, so it's not different. It's yeah. Not different. We have time to develop the, the English, something like that. So I, they will meet you soon. But, but I'm not here. Okay, thank. You. But if I if I have uh, some Huawei uh, phone, I can do my own models to, to speech uh, to do yes, speech recognition and use NP NPN. Yeah, that's the, the high AI function. The previous speech is that you can use the accelerator. Yeah, that's that's okay, thank you.